Today we're going below the belt. Oh, sorry, below the line. It's Voting 101 for 2022 with Matilda Bosley from The Guardian, Australia. Okay, so you might have heard your boring uncle talking about the need to vote below the line on the Senate ballot. And he says it with this fervour that makes you think that the very fabric of democracy itself is dependent on it. And to be fair, it kind of used to be. But in 2016, things changed a bunch. So let's talk about what is voting below the line and is it actually as important as Uncle Reggie claims? So when you walk into the polling booth, you're going to be given two ballots, a little lower house one and then a bloody massive Senate one. Oh, if you haven't watched our video explaining the differences between those two houses of parliament, I recommend you check it out here. As I mentioned a few episodes ago, every time a federal election rolls around, six out of a state's 12 Senate seats go up for grabs, or two if you live in the ACT or Northern Territory. On the Senate ballot, there's going to be about a dozen party names above the line. If you vote this way, you're voting for the party you most want in the upper house, and they've already decided who their top candidates are. Or you can venture below the line, where there are potentially hundreds of individual names. If you vote this way, you're voting for the candidates that you want to see in those seats. In years gone by, you had the choice of either marking one single party box above the line or numbering all like 140 something names below. And that's why you might hear older generations talk about how impossibly hard voting below the line is. But luckily, two elections ago, they changed it. Now when you get the ballot, if you want to vote above the line, you just need to number at least six preferences for parties. Or if you want to vote below the line, you need to number at least 12 individual candidates. But you can keep numbering for as long as your heart desires. But Matilda, you shout, you still haven't explained what difference this actually makes. Well, I reply, in the upper house, parties win seats based on the percentage of votes they receive. This is called proportional representation. It's all decided by some ridiculously complicated mathematical system, but roughly, let's say there's six seats up for grabs in New South Wales, if everyone voted above the line and the purple party got 50% of the votes, they would win 50% of the seats. They would have enough votes to get their first place candidate in, and then all the leftover votes would flow to their second place candidate, and then all those leftover votes would flow to their third place candidate. But oh, there aren't enough seats for four and five, so those guys miss out. This is also why you put preferences, because let's say you voted for the orange party as your number one, but they just aren't very popular and don't have enough votes to even win a single seat. Well, then your vote would go to the party you put as number two. This voting system means that notionally, you end up with a pretty true representation of Australia's political allegiances in the upper house. But there is still a problem. What if you absolutely love Purple's number three candidate for your state, but you think number one is a bit of a bastard? You don't want your vote going to him, so you wouldn't want to put the Purple Party as your number one. Well, in that case, you can vote for individual candidates instead below the line. So you could put Purple's number three person as your number one and then just fill out the rest of the preferences in case they don't get in. Maybe you put a brown party candidate that you really like as number two, then over to the orange party, then back to purple and so on and so forth until you reach at least 12. This way your vote never has to go to someone who you think is a garbage person even if they are a candidate for your preferred party. Basically, with this new system, you get to choose where your preferences flow either way. But if you have a strong opinion about individual candidates, then below the line is probably the way to go for you. Also, if you label all 150 whatever candidates below the line, they actually legally have to give you an extra free democracy sausage. <laughs>